I'm Mike Bradner, and this is Capital Views, and we have with us today Senator Tom Begich, who is the minority leader in the Senate. And Tom, um, you come from an old political family. Well, that's so, true, Mike. Yeah. And, uh, but you're the person in the hot seat now, so. <laughs> and you've taken on a fairly uh, bill with a lot of horizon so far, which is the reading bill. That's correct. And, yeah. uh, there's a lot of enthusiasm for that, and yet there's a lot of people who say we really want to know what this is before we commit. So tell us a little bit, bit about it. Well, three key components to the bill. It's, uh, and, and I want to say right out front, this is not a Republican bill. It's not a Democratic bill. This is a, a bill about policy. This is an Alaska bill and, uh, and an education bill. It deals with uh, universal voluntary pre-K, it recognizes that the only way you retain the gains of pre-K is to ensure that you have a robust reading program. It includes intervention with some of our, our uh, schools that are suffering the most and, and not able to uh, fully uh, support their kids. It provides elements of support from the Department of Education, many of which harken back to the, uh, you know, the Moore lawsuit and other lawsuits that we've had here. And uh, it really is a collaboration between the governor, the commissioner, and myself, as well as all the, uh, I like to say it's like uh, if you go into a pre-K classroom and you see all those kids' fingerprints all over everything, well, this bill is that bill. It has every legislators from Representative Ledoux and, and Senators uh, Stevens and Hughes all the way to uh, myself, uh, Representative Fields and uh, Representatives Drummond and Tuck, and just people who've invested. And yet to deal with people's reservations, a lot of the different support groups sure. have said, you know, they sort of support this, but they really want to see it on the table, and they really want to go through the pieces and make sure there's some of the negatives that have been encountered in other states. I mean, you hear the, uh, the term of holding students back. Sure, absolutely. One of the things that we were very concerned about is that we avoid the mistakes other states have made. In working uh, with the governor and the commissioner, we really focused on what are the policies that advance kids forward. And there are some states that have had more success than others. A lot of this bill comes out of the work done in Colorado. Uh, testimony reflects that. Uh, we know that this is the, you know, when the bill was introduced, it was a beginning point. As it goes through the process, we get additions from the different uh, thought processes that are out there. We've already, you know, it, when we originally introduced the bill, we actually found a spelling error in the legislation, which we were able to prepare immediately. But there are things like that, that, you know, when you get co uh, consensus around the bill, the next step, of course, is to make sure that consensus broadens out to the full 60 in the legislature. And uh, I think this bill is doing that, and the way that we're approaching it is doing that. How do you pay for this? Well, the bill itself has the, the three components. One of the components, the pre-K component, is phased in over six years. And what that does is it, the, it reduces the any single year fiscal impact. But we already provide millions of dollars in pre-K now. We provide a $2 million grant, an additional $1.2 million for the Moore schools. It's $3.2 $3 million. We have over a million dollars now coming in from the education raffle. That money, it, we, we believe, the governor and I believe, that should be designated toward this bill. You can't dedicate those funds, but you certainly can designate yes. them. And the legislature did a really good thing. Um, uh, the last legislature passed a bill that really re-examined how we do the education trust fund. That's increased the amount of funding into the state coffers of almost $10 million just in the education trust fund. Uh, not only that, there are some other revenue measures out there that we think will, will reach it. But the overall cost of this bill on the far end the most over six years is about $50 million spread out over that six years. What about this federal year, funds? There's federal funds that are also involved in the intervention piece. There's a five-year federal grant that the state has secured. That grant uh, includes 5% that's retained by the state, and that money is being devoted to the intervention and support to the school districts, and it's also being used for all the research components of the bill. So we're, we found a way to really lower the cost, but the outcomes are what we're looking at here because there really is lowered costs in the long run because you'll have fewer special education teachers. You'll be able to move kids into the, uh, to the base student allocation who are kids in pre-K. And these two things combined, getting those kids prepared will actually lower costs in the long run. We believe will lower costs in the long run. So the problem with some of these things, people hear a high profile, it's got a, you know, a lot of attention to it. Mm -hmm. And what makes it sort of stick around 
And I guess, are you going to stick around to make sure this happens? <laughs> well, I'm here right yeah. now. You know, that's up to the people who, you yeah. know, cast ballots. And I can't really speak to that. But uh, my goal is to make sure that we, we get universal voluntary pre-K and the support it needs in reading. And then in the end, um, I trust that there are always going to be a majority of 60 people in the legislature are going to continue to fight for good education policy. You know, money is scarce. We can probably expect that the BSA is going to, at some point, move a little here. And that's uh, going to... Yes and no. Is it money that's scarce or will? I believe that the, the resources to, to fund an effective state government that allows for a high quality of life are there now, today, in front of us. Do we have the will to be sure that we're using them effectively? I'm not sure sometimes that we do, but I believe in the long run we will. Education is too important to virtually everyone in that building. Tom, we're running out of time, and it's been a pleasure having you. We've been talking to Tom Begich, who is the minority leader in the state senate and comes from a family that's long been an advocate of education. Thank, Thank you. you for being with us, Tom. Thank you for having me, Mike.